To those less familiar with fearsome critters, one may initially suspect that it is a very limited tradition. However, this is not at all the case. In fact, there exists no less than 300 plus fearsome critters presently known at this time, each story being uniquely grounded with its own particular characteristics and background. However impressive as this figure is, it really only represents a small share of fearsome critter stories ever told, namely, the ones written down for the enjoyment of subsequent generations. This in no way accounts for the breadth of fearsome critter stories that existed exclusively in the tall tales of the lumberjack, a number we can only summarize to have been many, many times larger. Now, well, today, we do know of these stories through the determined efforts of writers who gifted them to our current generation in permanent form. Such stories were recorded and collected in the works of authors such as William T. Cox, Henry H. Tryon, Charles E. Brown, among others. Now, while countless books, newspaper articles, and other sources make mention of fearsome critters, undoubtedly some works have held a greater influence over others. Seven sources, in particular, make up a sort of fearsome critter canon, for it is from these texts that latter works, like Alvin Schwartz's Kickle Snifters and Other Fearsome Critters, or more modern adaptations, are largely derived. The main fearsome critter canon typically consists of fearsome creatures of the lumber woods with a few desert and mountain beasts by William T. Cox, 1910, fearsome critters by Henry H. Tryon, 1939, the Hodag and other towns of the logging camps by Lakeshore Kearney, 1928, Paul Bunyan, Natural History by Charles E. Brown, 1935, We Always Lied to Strangers by Vance Randolph, 1951, Mythical Creatures of the USA and Canada by Walker D. Wyman, 1978, largely based on its predecessor, Mythical Creatures of the North Country. And lastly, Yarns of the Big Woods by Art Childs, 1922 and 1925. Now, first-hand accounts are by no means limited to these seven, and less notable, but mentionable works do exist. These include sources like Giggles from Glacier Guides by Jim Welt, A Saga of the Saw Tubes by Hank Singer and Nick Villanueva, and the collection of stories Marvelous Critters of Puget Sound based on articles published by the Seattle Star. Nevertheless, it is the canonical seven which have had a significant impact popularizing fearsome critters and shaping our understanding of these stories today. So, without further ado, welcome travelers of the Hallow Woods. I'm Linwood S. Sharp, director of Lumberwoods Unnatural History Museum, and today we will journey to take a closer look at some characteristics of fearsome critters found within the fearsome critter canon. Among the canon, certain characteristics often reappear from one book to the next. Rarely are all characteristics present in every single case. As well, while some traits are not exclusive to works on fearsome critters alone, Others seem especially definitive of this tradition. Touching on a point mentioned in a previous video, fearsome critters, as a 
opposed to cryptids or legendary creatures are purely a parody of zoology. Consequently, Fearsome Critters by Henry H. Tryon, Fearsome Creatures of the Lumberwoods by William T. Cox, and Mythical Creatures of the USA and Canada by Walker D. Wyman are all written in a mock field guide style format. Within these fantasy field guides, one will find scientific names for particular critters. However, such taxonomy is likely used for humorous effect rather than serious classification. For example, the squawk as specified by Cox is called Lycrimacorpus dissolvens. This is derived from the Latin words for tear, body, and dissolve. While, for instance, Wyman relates that the bog hop, an animal which is half moose and half beaver, is Castoracles platycerus. However, taxonomy is not the only thing what one might notice among the names of fearsome critters. Those with more than a past seen interest in the subject would surely have noticed many such animals are named specifically for a behavioral trait. Frequently, and at odds with the legendary creatures of classic mythology, will one find many fearsome critters with little or no details given to their appearance at all. For example, the hide behind, as reported by Tryon, Kearney, Randolph, Wyman, and Brown, is so named simply because it is always hidden from sight, while the hangdown, described by Brown and Wyman, is called as such because it is always hanging from something. Even still, Tryon's come at a body is a direct reference to the animal's habit of rushing up upon people. And from Art Childs's Yarns of the Big Woods, one may also add the tree hopper and bait robbers to this list. The reason for such an attribute likely again alludes back to fearsome critters being a parody of zoology, as any good field guide generally goes at great lengths to detail aspects of an animal's behavior and habits, in addition to detailing physical description. Accordingly, fearsome critters are simply following suit, and too much emphasis cannot be placed on behavior when it comes to fearsome critters. But on their outward appearance, a trait particular to fearsome critters is the sheer number of them which mirror mechanical devices, simple tools, or have attributes otherwise common to non-living things. Like the Trepidero, described by Cox, Tryon, Brown, and Wyman, which has extendable legs like a photographer's tripod, granting it easy access over rough terrain. Or even the joint snake, as recounted by Randolph and Wyman, that can be broken apart only for it to reassemble itself. These, of course, are to say nothing of the Gilly Gilu, that, related by Brown, is a bird that lays spotted, cube-shaped eggs to stop them from rolling, but which also make excellent dice if hard-boiled. Nevertheless, while certain traits seem suspiciously convenient, there are also fearsome critters where the reverse is true. These are creatures possessing a natural attribute that seems some cruel joke of nature, intended for the sole aim of utterly dooming the animal. Cox relates that the hugag is prevented from grazing due to its long upper lip and laying down due to its jointless legs. Also, Randolph, Wyman, Brown, Kearney, Tryon, and Childs all remark upon the side hill goucher. The goucher is an animal trapped in an endless circular path around a hill, 
due to its legs of uneven length, the sidehill gouger can never stand upon leveled ground. Likewise, Wyman adds that the loop cur eagle, or wild blue yonder wonder, is always in constant flight due to its lack of legs, making any safe landing impossible. Furthermore, circling back to behavior, there are similarly fearsome critters with predispositions in complete opposition to common behavior. Brown commented on both the goofus bird, which nests upside down and flies backwards, not caring where it is going, only where it has been, and the goof fang, a fish that swims backwards to keep the water out of its eyes. What is more, whereas many monsters of myth and legend may be merely described as simply ferocious, fearsome critters often display a far greater range of personalities. To illustrate, Cox and Tryon describe the squonk, which is so greatly saddened by its hideous appearance that it weeps constantly, even dissolving into tears should it be seen. More still, the agropelter is described as vengeful, the cactus cat as drunk, the gumbaroo as always hungry, the come out of body as harmless but surprising, the goofang as curious among others. While there are certainly fearsome critters, what might be considered ferocious, among fearsome critters, ferociousness, ironically, is generally an exception, not the rule. Undoubtedly, the characteristics of fearsome critters are perhaps as vast and unique as fearsome critters themselves, but they are nonetheless another intriguing facet of this wretch tradition. But, as always, I'm Linwood S. Sharp with Lumberwoods A Natural History Museum. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for future content. Until we meet again, Carpe Noctum Travelers.